despite the challenges of 2020, Art Shape are thrilled to bring you this diverse and glorious exhibition of painting, mixed media, drawing and installation created by artists on the Art Bridge Emergence Programme, artist in residence Deb Hoy and commissioned artists. Our partnership with Western Burt Arboretum has proved a solace and inspiration for our artists who have presented different perspectives on the critical connection between humans and trees. The work demonstrates a deep engagement and connection with the Arboretum. I'm a fine artist and neo-petrifactionist currently anchored to Stroud Valley's art space. I make gigantic experimental watercolours. My work may clash with the traditional expectations of watercolour. Here and there I've been unexpectedly compelled to make sculptural work. This has been illuminated by my latent interests which encompass hunting down fossiliferous strata and mineral collecting. I want to know what makes these things beautiful I no longer believe that beauty is a societal construct or some vestigial remnant of a biological urge. Archaeology, history and politics also inform my work, as does life. I've been decisively blessed by soul-cleaving illness since I was a boy and have faced extinction more than one might politely expect before breakfast. This compels an urgency in my work. Any personal circumstances are mine, I try to make universal. The work is really about you. Ambered fugue. Medium, walnut, seared tree resin. Luscious glue with a delicate tincture of resin. Ah. This artwork was fashioned from a diseased walnut tree in Stratford Park, together with tree resin casts made from garnet and beryl crystals. I spent four months cutting this gem down into thinkable size. The fire-like glow of the crystals was achieved through the rapid boiling of liquid incendiary tree resin. Ow! I believe I'm the first artist to use brittle and fluid pine tree resin as a medium. You may rightly laugh at such folly. I wanted to convey the feeling of sheer unbridled awe in discovering crystals brightly coursing through the Earth's mineral veins. It's aesthetically inspired by some stalagmitic flowstone that I retrieved from a blasted cave. I figured the forest that once finally cloaked our gloriously scarified island were at least owed a retrospective apology. So, in my obviously inept attempt, I'm dressing the wound with tree resin to staunch the, the loss. Like a rotten, hollow prayer to something bigger than us, held down here in our subnuminal lives. I see a section of a twisted, hollow, afflicted walnut tree, apparently three foot high and a foot wide, rooted securely to a transparent plastic base. The tree has a deep, ovate gash on one side, where the tree oozes thick, gelatinous tree resin, apparently protectively. Well, you might hope so. Zipping tendrils of stalagmitic forms descend from one side, as if mineralised clear holy water had been frozen before reaching the pilgrim's mouth, denying sustenance. I live and work in Stroud, Gloucestershire, and studied painting at the Winchester School of Art. My recent series of work explores our relationship with nature, time and solitude through abstracted montages made from paper and acrylic paint. A narrative which invites the viewer to explore imagined landscapes that through the use of torn up and pasted blocks of colour are not precise, allowing a sense of time and atmosphere to flow through the experience. On a hillside of deep green, shades of green and brown grass and mud stand three stones of a grey slate
thin and narrow, they reach vertically up into a sky of grey swirls that recedes into a darker purple night. Dark sky lightening to the horizon above a golden brick shaped mountain surrounded by slate stone arranged in a circle the gradual sunlight lightens the green grass. Textiles are often seen as utilitarian and functional. People immediately think of bedding and clothing. My aim is to contribute to the growing discussion of textiles as a fine art form. Using water-soluble fabric, thread, wire and mixed media, I construct three-dimensional pieces that explore the structures of flora that are often overlooked and found in urban settings. I'm interested in the interaction between humans and the natural world in particular, the effect we have on flora around the world. My work causes people to stop and take a second look closer to explore the structure of the pieces. They spark discussions around how textiles and threads can be used to create unique pieces of art. I have always loved living immersed in my own creative mess. I know that I am very privileged to live in such a beautiful world that offers me so many opportunities, so I plan to use whatever time I have to celebrate that through my creative endeavours. This project has given me a chance to see the familiar anew. I've been around trees all my life, planting them, watching them grow, enjoying the harvests they bear, and relishing their shade on hot summer days. Over the last few months, I have developed a deeper understanding of the bigger picture in our relationship with trees. As I have come to appreciate the fragility of our interdependence, I have attempted to show this through my work. I have chosen to explore this correlation through a variety of media, because then, whenever I start a new piece of work, I am given the freedom to meditate on the relationship and to feel awe and wonder at our amazing world. Reformed. Medium. Wood, beads, copper gilding. This is a piece sawn from a local ash tree that was deformed and weakened by ash dieback. The idea is that even in the face of disaster, that is going to kill the majority of our ash trees, there is beauty to be found and celebrated. Trees and humans have, throughout history, faced and overcome new and unexpected catastrophes. 
Just as the ash will, over time, evolve to cope with dieback, so will mankind continue to grow and evolve and adapt to change long beyond this present pandemic. Interrelated. Medium, recycled copper pipe, lime bark, lime cordage. A reflective piece where the bark appears to flow in the air that surrounds it. The work uses bark of the lime from the West Burton Green Workshop. It celebrates man's continued relationship with the Westenburg lime plantation, whereby the plantation has survived for 2,000 years because it has been pollarded and the timber used by man. Momiji no go, beneath the autumn leaves, Carolyn Jemson. My idea is to celebrate the endangered Asa Grissium. I have used Grissium leaves from Westenburg as a stencil to make leaves from recycled fabrics. These I then embroidered with keywords from the project and sewed them onto a recycled evening jacket. Applicated along the base of the garment are words from Clive James's poem, Japanese Maple. In Japan, it is believed that autumn forest bathing, Mimiji no go, among, among acer trees results in man entering nature, nature entering man, achieving a communion with autumn trees, a, tr a critical connection between humans and trees. I am the macabre, the visceral, raw, and more importantly, authentically creative self. This declaration empowers me both as an artist and as a human being. I used mixed mediums, pencils, pens, ink, paint, and other objects to conceive and create that is redolent of beauty, that is true to me and presents me in my connection with the specific subject matter I have chosen to explore. Making art has helped me in the best of and worst of times, improving well-being, like my well-being and my mental health, working with whatever is in front of me, the line of a pencil or a swipe of a brush opens me up to social connections and a rich and diverse emotional experience. My piece for Western Bur Arboretum circulates how trees are physically affected in today's world. In this work, the tree is also a metaphor for how the planet is impacted by environmental changes. I have enjoyed drawing since I can remember and over the years I have learned new skills and now love to paint, print and draw a variety of subjects. I like to draw from life but I also like to create art based on fantasy and ancient beliefs. I like to create works of art that are accessible and some of my pieces are durable and tactile. In this case the work Dance Macabre is tactile. I have overcome my own health barriers to fulfill my need to create and share. 
I am lucky enough to live in the Forest of Dean, so Western Burt Arboretum feels like a home from home. It has been a wonderful educational experience coming to the Arboretum and very grounding for me to gain a little insight into the plight of some rare and endangered trees. Fragile by Clancy Ward Medium Collage and metal leaf on board Size 30 by 40 centimetres this artwork reflects the fragility of our trees and how precious they are to us. The gold lines are from the Japanese art of Kintsugi, where something broken is made beautiful, strong and useful. I hope that we can find a way to help the trees be stronger and more resilient. We should treat them gently and protect them as far as possible. Triad by Clancy Ward, medium, original lino print, size 30 by 40 centimetres. For many years, humans have worshipped trees, even believing them to have spirits or souls. Traditionally, the dryad is a female spirit of the oak tree. In this picture, the dryad's arms form a protective canopy over the lungs of the earth, and she is surrounded by nature. Dance Macabre by Clancy Ward Medium, enamel paint on canvas Size, 51 by 70 centimetres The Dance Macabre was a popular theme during another pandemic, the plague. It was pertaining to death being the great equaliser. In this piece, the tree appears to be dancing in its glorious autumn colours, but the leaves are actually dying. However, it is also a symbol of hope because we know that come the spring, the tree will be full of the new green buds of life. Disintegration by Clancy Ward. Medium, graphite on paper. Size, 30 by 40 centimetres. Due to disease and climate change, we are losing some of our most precious resources, which includes many species of trees. Here, the ash tree is suffering from ash dieback and is shown falling through an hourglass as it disintegrates. Are we running out of time? Western Burt Arboretum is fighting to battle these losses and works hard to raise awareness through its 10-year vision. At the age of 46, I decided to return to higher education and attended the London College of Furniture to study a four-year course in creative crafts and interior design. I then decided to do a teaching course, which led me into a very many happy years teaching this subject to students with physical disabilities in two different centres. When I retired, I continued studying at Blackheath Conservatoire, where I studied a beginner's art course with the most inspiring tutor, Ken Bright. That was the beginning of a very wonderful and fulfilling time. I work mainly in oils and paint things that I think are special, 
I have a very busy mind, always full of ideas and how to do things, but I never stick to one thing, so my paintings are varied. My art is influenced by landscape and animals. I love sketching amongst the trees at Westonbert and Sims Yacht and watching the birds at Slimbridge. I use ink and watercolour pencils when sketching out of doors and acrylics when I want strong colours. I have visited Westonbert regularly since childhood and believe trees are vital to our health and well-being. My paintings are influenced by the variety of shapes and form and vivid colours of the Arboretum. As a writer, I enjoy using my creative imagination to open limitless doors of the impossible made possible. The universe is my oyster when it comes to creativity. By writing stories, the universe of ideas to explore, develop and share. My dream is to become a published author, to see my work in print and share my creativity with the world. I had begun reading and writing from a very young age. I had quickly grown fascinated with words, both by putting them together and learning what they'd meant. I do find I'm more better at communicating through my writing than I am through verbal dialogue. I believe writing gives me confidence and can be very therapeutic. I enjoy sharing my talent. I also enjoy drawing especially that of my own cartoon characters. Writing is my forte, though. I believe I do feel more at home with my writing. What I see from a tree, that means something to me. A tree, to me, is like that of a person. We both start out from seeds. Both seeds are planted. It slowly begins to take root and starts to nourish and grow. Both tree and humans start life as a baby, and through time we both mature, with age the further we grow. Both blossoms, limbs begin to grow, growing taller with nourishment and sprouting leaves and or hair. Both can provide by thy giving of gifts, gifts of life and of more life. An apple here, a pear there, simple but magnificent offerings 
to sustain a host of life. Creating a world where creatures depend on the rich offerings a tree has to offer. Lives that are only sustainable by those offerings. A fallen fruit does not despair, because from that fallen fruit, even though it decays and rots away, the seed still has something to offer, for it can find its way back into the ground and begin a whole new life cycle as a resurrection of sorts. What is so important to trees that is also important to human beings and other animals, both great and small, is a that of water. Without water, everything would wither away, die and not ever grow. So blessed are days of rain, for rain nurtures, helps to grow and flourish, to heal and to help provide the offerings of rich pickings. To live without rain would be for all to perish. Trees whisper amongst each other. They move with the wind and the earth. They whisper of great days and sadly that of doom. The humans come to chop us down, one tree whispers to another. Why they do that? asked the other. Because they don't really understand how important we are to them. You see, for humans to continue living, they need us. We sustain all life on land, like our distant cousins that dwell under the deepest parts of the seas and the oceans do. Our distant cousins sustains life for the creatures, both great and small, that live within their watery world. We have enemies, both from animals and fire. But we continue to thrive because we are all survivors. So like all human beings and other animals, both great and small, we are not all that different from them at all. Art has been an escape route for me for much of my life. From a traumatic childhood where I lost my father at an early age and my parents had mental health problems, art came along with me as an avenue towards greater things. I did graphic design at college, gaining a Master of Arts degree. The works I'm showing here were completed during the Artbridge Emergence course in relation to the Western Burke project. They show some of the range of my interests, which are printing, painting and photography. Unborn is a painting made in ink and watercolour. The idea for this piece came from listening to a talk given by Penny the Propagator, who grows and tends the new tree specimens at Western Burt Arboretum. She'd put so much work into the task. I felt that the young trees were like her children, as she cared so much for them, and what a great responsibility she has to keep them healthy. I kept having the thought that the young trees were like babies in a nursery and then woke up one morning with an image of a fetus in a womb in my mind's eye. The image is of a fetus which it appears to be in, in a nut. The womb is like a nutshell where the placenta is like a tree. Roots of the tree are attached to the baby and the leaves and branches of the tree come out of the side of the womb leaves go out into the outside world where they take their nourishment from the air around there the possibility of viruses or pollution which the unborn child takes in also Ginkgo biloba, a liner cut print using brusho paints and soaked tissue paper. The ginkgo biloba tree is the only tree left of a very old species of the ginkgo phyta. All other in this phyta are now extinct. It is a very old species with fossils dating back 270 million years. Biloba means the leaf has two lobes. The leaf is an unusual fan shape and the tree has an incredible immune system, 
Some trees are said to live to over a thousand years old in China and Japan. The oldest one in Britain is at Kew Gardens and is 250 years old. It is used commercially in Chinese medicine and is believed to improve memory. I found the unusual leaf shape an interesting motif. Also the cells under the microscope make a beautiful image, which is what I wanted to use to make a piece of art. I'm interested here in creating a design that could be used as a fabric design or surface pattern that could have different uses. The print has three layers. The background represents the bacteria and viruses, etc. that could threaten it. The middle layer shows the cellular structure and the top layer is the leaf itself. The ginkgo is one of the only trees that has a separate male and female trees. The male tree has split leaves and the female produces strange smelling round yellow fruits. The female trees are extremely rare. It is amazing to find out that a Japanese scientist discovered that the reproductive parts of the male tree actually has sperm. The tree became almost extinct but was saved from extinction by its association with people. Hi, I'm Jenny Birch. I'm a mixed media artist who loves to use found treasures, reinventing them in unusual ways. I like combining traditional artist meet museums with stitching, fabric, organic and inorganic materials. I'm inspired by the world around me, my faith, nature, and especially sea, the sea and trees. My response to the world and man's intervention creates layers building textures and depths. This response means that my work can be both abstract or realistic. I believe everyone should be considerate in their use of our limited resources. I hate waste and the throwaway society we've become. I've used mixed media and textiles in this. There are leaves that are both drawn painted, stitched, and created from found treasures. They tumble down the page, capturing the sense of movement of leaves falling and blowing in the wind. Meanderings. Again, this is a mixed media with textiles. It's an abstract inspired by walking in the countryside around my home and at Western Burt. The colours and shapes represent how shielding has felt to myself and my isolation from others. The natural world preserved my sanity in their first lockdown. Waste Not You. Again, it's a mixed media textiles. It's an abstract inspired by the wood shavings that I found littering the ground at Western Burt's woodwork area. I dyed them in autumnal colours. From tiny seeds, a central French knot, mighty trees grow. Ink and stitched rings portray one year's growth. Shavings bunched as knots. The outermost ring of stitch, pen and eucalyptus bark from a heart shape encompasses the whole, combining organic treasures from both, representing the bonds formed through the commission and exhibition.
I am an artist working in a variety of media, drawing, painting from life or imagination, or maybe playing with some wire and fine materials to create abstract forms with a certain sense of character. Even apparently inanimate objects can have a soul or some kind of story attached to them. I am fascinated by the mathematical patterns in sacred geometry, particularly natural spirals, ongoing and always evolving. We are all unique as individuals and also part of the wider universe on a deeper level. I am an advocate for therapeutic arts. I believe that everyone has their own inner artist, whether they are aware of it or not. My work from the Western Bert exhibition is exploring the spiritual connection between humanity and nature in the form of dryads, or tree spirits, deities, arising from the physical in terms of trees providing us with warmth, shelter, nourishment and oxygen to breathe. Hello, my name is Jamie Eden. I have an avid interest in wildlife and like to create pictures of wild creatures and nature using my pointless skills, which I have developed and experimented with over the last five years. I love Gothic imagery and I like to create pictures of the darker aspects of life. I love to visit parks in the Cotswolds where I care for the wildlife and learn more about them. These visits inspire me to improve my skills and interest. I use mixed media, but I'm passionate about using pen and ink to create imaginary characters and environments. They incorporate everyday life in quirky and unique representations. The process channels my creative endeavours and takes me away from everyday reality. I work between illustrative commissions and personal creations.
I was lucky enough to go to college when I was older. I love painting, mostly with oil paints. I find it a challenge to get down on paper what I have in my head. I used to do big life-sized paintings, but now mainly do small pictures. I enjoy drawing because it gets me to concentrate and I find it therapeutic. Sometimes I like to have music on in the background when I draw. I find it really mindful and it makes me use my imagination. Most of my sketches are based on animals and people and recently abstract patterns and trees. I try to put across emotion too. I will always be interested in art. I am a visual artist based by the coast in Dorset. Working in a variety of media, I make paintings, drawings, prints and textile pieces. Seeking out structures, my work, often process driven, is an exploration of contrasts, spaces and atmospheres. My breath is given to me by the trees as they expire the oxygen which I breathe in and then out as carbon dioxide which they then absorb. The cyclical nature of this process has inspired me to create a mandala type image using my breath. The circle symbolises the idea that life is never ending and everything is connected, with the image created being a lasting impression of the transference of gases, made using charcoal which is the carbon that is eventually released back into the environment once the tree dies. My name is Maddie Smith Nelson and I'm a poet from Cheltenham, Gloucestershire. I have a creative writing degree, BA Honours, and I draw my inspiration from my experiences of a challenging mental health condition and nature, spirituality and astrology, of which I have just completed a professional diploma. I recently published a book of my poetry called The Voice Under My Skin and I'm compiling my second book. Trees. Trees are like humans. They warn each other of storms, passing light through their roots. Light to light, we talk to one another. He's the language of our kind. The trees have language too, ancient, natural, deep as the earth itself. Rooted in soil, they stretch out towards light and down into the darkness towards mud, water, crystal touching amethyst, clear quartz. The beauty under the surface is something the human heart feels too, as we transmit what we can, interdependent, secretly beautiful underneath the layers of human difficulty. Light will touch light and love will find love again. Art is alchemy. The transmutation of lead into gold is a metaphor for the refinement of the inner being. Artists turn ordinary things into items of beauty and interest, and this artist has learnt, grown and begun to heal in the process. Art reflects the cosmos from the point of view of the individual and changes both, however minutely. Images come to the past, the timeless and consider the future. They create joy, fear and in the best cases thought, reflection and perhaps some new understanding. In my work I hope to draw attention to the almost unending diversity of worth and beauty, 
and our collective responsibility as a species to care for it. There is magnificence in the soaring flight of vultures, yet they are at risk of extinction. As I create art, so I discover, define and develop myself. Explore what it is to be autistic, mentally ill and human. Creativity is life. It is joy. It is hope. To fail that which sustains us. Mixed media collage on card. Angular, abstract, broken, half exploded trees and branches. Black and words, torn white and grey. Tortured, twisted, bare. To be in the presence of peace, watercolour, chalk pastel, acrylic primer on wooden support. Dark trunk and dark network of branches, foliage surrounds and crosses, aura like greens, purples and blue, gaps of glowing light. Nature, and especially flora, inspires me. I collect orchids, plants, and rubber tree plants, and cactuses. Because the quality of night changes their colour. Great crested greaves, dab chicks, wrens, uh, nuthatches, uh, thrushes, robins, blackbirds, all the birds. I uh, like to create dots, squiggles and lines when I create pictures, paintings. And the process of doing the pictures, it excites me and I wonder what I'm going to do next. I use acrylic and sometimes I like to mix in glitter to see how it looks. I got some new other paint, buff paint this time. I, I changed the colour in some paintings and one went really nice. Orangey red and tops and cans and bottle tops I like to mix in off the beer cans. <laughs> Do you have a tree that you feel you have a special relationship with? You might see it every day from your bedroom window when you wake. You might have sat underneath its shade every summer with your growing children. You may have been trying to get your neighbours to cut it down. Trees have been totems for personal reflection and emotional release for thousands of years from the mythical tree spirits of ancient Greece to modern day suburban martyrs. We imbue them with personalities, feeling, and even moral compasses. This project seeks to recognize this important, but often hidden part that trees play 
in humanity's existence in the 21st century. We are aiming to capture the audience's immediate feelings and stories around the tree they instinctively go to in times of need. It is true for me that art can speak where words often fail. I am a self-taught mixed media artist living in Gloucestershire, UK. I have always loved art, but it's only since my children have grown up that I now find that I have time to really develop and follow my passion. I love to create imaginative, original artwork designs on different themes. Most of my works are completed from my small garden studio. My inspirations are nature, wildlife, history, faith, hope, love, poetry and music. And I'm also a singer-songwriter and write poetry. Winter tree, medium mixed media. In exploring the critical connection between humans and trees, the area that inspired me especially and connected also with my ongoing artistic journey was that of global traditions and tree beliefs. The tree of life and its symbolism is featured in nearly all forms of history and religion, symbolising both harmony and balance. The tree of life represents the afterlife and connection between earth and heaven. My own journey through grief of losing my son five and a half years ago started with creating my own tree of life and it gave me much needed brain space to be working on a piece of art in memory of my son and enabled me to cope during the most difficult time of my life, doing something positive during a life crisis. I've created seven different themed tree artworks over the past six years. My new winter tree will add to this series. I had wanted to create a winter tree at some point in the future, but had no inspiration. Western Bert gave me the inspiration I needed. My winter tree is based on a bare tree of life shape amidst a snowy background. I decided to add some of the wildlife that would be found at Western Bert at winter time into this tree. The connection between trees and poets throughout history also came to mind. Around the edge of my artwork, I have included Under the Greenwood Tree by our much loved poet, William Shakespeare. Birch Trees in Autumn, Mixed Media by Sue Tricky. This artwork is based on the theme of birch trees in autumn time. They have always been one of my personal favourite trees. Again, I have added wildlife that you might see at Western Bert. I have added some text about trees observed whilst at Western Bert. On one of our walks, we walked past a wooden shelter of which I took photographs. All of the words carved into the legs, sides of the wooden shelter were single words about tree. A tree is sensuous, enduring, etc. There are seven or eight different single words to describe what a tree is carved into the legs, sides of the wooden shelter. The carved words inspired me to think more deeply about what wood is 
and how valuable our trees are in so many ways. Western Burt Wildlife Miniatures. As an overflow from my two main exhibition pieces, The Winter Tree and Birch Trees in Winter, I have created many more tiny miniatures from clay. I decided to create this mixed media display of them and added vintage paper and music into the background. My father is a keen metal detectorist and the tiny metal dog was unearthed by him during a dig. It is an interesting vintage find and I thought it fitted well with my artwork. At Western Bird, I loved to see that dogs are welcome but in restricted areas. I do not work with any medium. What interests me with this type is that any medium would make a show of a type. I work with no media because it not only demonstrates the way art process itself, but I can use my conscience to know myself. I was understanding myself in art and had made 11 works between 2014 and 2017. A while later after my 10th work, I had discovered that I had reached a dead end. Things kept popping up, but they were not real things. They felt suitable for me, but could not exist. The viewer would never understand. I keep piling on the coloured strokes, each page mounted with squiggles, moving in abstract form. I was deciding each colour every stroke, and deciding every space for every stroke. The process did not come to a halt. The shapes that came, I ordered into the life of a plant. I am a textile and mixed media artist living in the beautiful Cotswolds, where the undulating rolling hills and valleys, which along with the trees and hedges, form the rich patchwork of colour and texture that is the inspiration for my work, as well as providing comfort and healing at a devastatingly tragic time. I am passionate about nature, wildlife and the natural world around me, which also inspires me. I am particularly obsessed with trees, especially the bark, when it has formed into fascinating gnarly textures, shapes and hollows, as well as the visible root structure above the ground. During my lockdown walks in the local woods, these spoke to me of fairies. I work in mixed media, often using collage to build up layers, thereby adding texture and colour variations, which I then accentuate. Thank you. 
As an artist, I delight in living an active lifestyle. Always on the go, I juggle tasks as a writer, entrepreneur, event specialist, host, and artist. Originally from the Philippines, I've been living in the UK for four years now. Happily married to my husband, John, I create special moments with La Viva kicks and crafts. I enjoy exploring my creativity with mixed media. I believe everyone is an artist. To me, life is an art. For this exhibition, I have created We Are Trees, a series of two artworks inspired by human symbiotic relationship with nature. Drawing is a way for me to get to know a subject by looking at it intently and repeatedly to understand its form. The fine lines of a detailed pencil drawing have shaped my ideas for large outdoor sculpture, hoping to translate the delicate lace-like patterns of roots, branches, veins, capillaries into a scale that we can literally get inside. This drawing links branching root patterns to the anatomy of human lungs and connects to the outdoor installation Lungs of the Earth, which can be found by roaming through the Arboretum. I first developed my ideas for lungs of the earth by watching a group of corvids coming in to roost on the bare branches of a copper beech tree near my home during lockdown. I filmed the cacophony and on watching it back was struck by how the branches against a colourless evening sky resembled lungs. Trees often grow in mirror images, their roots and branches echoing each other epitomising the phrase, as above, so below. With this drawing, I want to make a further connection between all those who breathe oxygen and the trees that provide this life-sustaining breath by absorbing carbon dioxide and giving us oxygen to fill our lungs. Extending the practice of drawing into a sculptural realm you can find similar branches and capillaries within the Lungs of the Earth installation. However, in that artwork, the drawings have been made from rope and cord. The older I get, the more I worry about the legacy my generation has left on this planet and how I would look my grandchildren in the eye. 
Have we failed as custodians of this planet in the attempts we have made to protect our vulnerable species? When I visited Westenburg to form my ideas for the work, I sought out the trees in danger. I tried to imagine what would happen to them without the red list categorization to highlight their vulnerability and places like Westenburg to nurture and protect them. Maybe my great grandchildren will be seeing them in museums as exhibits. This evoked childhood memories inside me, back to the natural history museums of the 1970s, viewing long lost items in cases, through glass, in unnatural environments, elevated to importance through their extinction, lovingly presented through their demise with care. If only that care was there to protect them from the extinction in the first place. By crocheting around these fragile species with love, patience and gentle attention, presenting them as if they were extinct, I hope that I have created a scene that can remain in this work and in my imagination and not turn into reality. A sad prediction of the future for these beautiful trees. Amy Freeman Art Stuff is a name I devised to describe what I do, but I guess multimedia artists would do equally well. I studied fine art sculpture at the University of Gloucestershire, graduating in 2004, and after an expansion of my interest in the conceptual side of my work, social sculpture and connective practice at Oxford Brookes, graduating in 2018. The leaves included come from the Californian walnut tree, which is classed as VU or vulnerable, represented by the colour yellow, the Hungarian hawthorn and the paperback maple, which are classed as EN or endangered and are orange, the Katsura and Wilson magnolia trees, which are classed as NT, near threatened and are represented by green, and the Murray birch, which is classed as CR critical and is red. Breathe. The metaphor of trees as lungs has been used before. It occurred to me, however, that particularly in a period where we're experiencing a global pandemic which kills by attacking the lungs, that this might be used to highlight the fragility of the environment. Without a conscious effort to cherish and protect this huge natural resource that gives us so much, we will lose it and everything else along with it. I'm an artist craftsman living and working in Gloucester. I initially trained as a potter and artist blacksmith, but then made a career in health and social care. Eight years ago, I resigned from my post in social services and went self-employed. I now work part-time as a carpenter, spending the rest of my time on more creative work. Since then, I've regularly exhibited uh, paintings and drawings, and I've been involved in a number of community art projects in Gloucestershire. My initial ideas for this commission were based on images with overprinted text, listing and detailing the benefits that trees confer. But in the end, I chose a simpler piece. Those details are available elsewhere in the Arboretum for anyone who cares to look for them, and I wanted to convey a simpler message. Western Burt is genuinely thrilled to have been part of ArtShape's ArtBridge Emergence Programme. With restrictions providing a challenging backdrop for arts and culture across the world, we feel privileged that this project was able to continue. We've always believed in the power of nature for our health and well-being, and so it's even more pertinent this year that we've been able to provide a space for artists to be inspired by the tree collection. As the world changes, we're keen to find new ways to achieve our mission to connect people with trees, and this project has done just that. Providing an exploration into how people find connection with the trees around them, these artworks are timely and important. 
Through the artist's perspectives, they offer visitors new and exciting ways to engage with the natural world and create a connection to nature that's vital for a sustainable future. ArtShape runs a countywide programme of arts courses and projects with a specific focus on disability issues and social inclusion. Established in 1993, we're a small band of dedicated workers passionate about supporting and enabling people facing disabling barriers to realise their creative potential. ArtShape's distinct skill in socially inclusive practice is developing tailor-made provision to meet specific needs of individuals communities and organisations and directly engaging people through arts on their own terms.